the day with the vet. And today we're looking at people with, you know, who have family pets. With the booming majority of Kenyans, uh, actually the Kenyan middle class, uh, taking our pets and making them part of their family, these fiery creatures need veterinary care to ensure their health is in perfect condition. This is critical to safeguard human health by making sure that pests and diseases are kept at bay since they sometimes can cross over from pets to human beings. Our reporter Dr. Paul Kangede uh, talked to Dr. Kibaria and brings us this report in today's episode of The Resident Vet of Which I Leave You. I'm Nogib Kimboy and this has been Business Today. Enjoy The Resident Vet. Today we are in Itangera at um, the Royal Crest Veterinary Clinic just to focus on what veterinarians who deal with pets actually do on a day-to-day -day basis because these pets require specialized care just to make sure their health is at their best. So today we will be joined by uh, Dr. Kibaria who is going to tell us what actually they do at the Royal Crest Veterinary Clinic. Kaidri join us. How is the day going guys? The day is good. Yes. Uh, we're just checking in patients. Yes. Yes. Ah, thank you. So we just want to come and see what uh, your day looks like on, uh, on a day to day. Mm -hmm. The cases you handle, how the clients are coming in. I just run a few things on how best to take care of our pets. Uh, that's very good. Yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. So, so probably you can tell us uh, what uh, you, your names, uh, the name of your dog, and probably what you are here this morning for. Uh, mm, uh, this is a South African Mastiff, it's a South African Boabel. Uh, I'm here at, at Royal Crest Veterinary Clinic. Uh, they have been, uh, we have been with them since I started breeding way back. Uh, now I've come for a checkup. And one of my female is having some stomach upset. Nice. Um, good morning. Morning to you. Uh, what's happening? I see you visiting the vet this morning. What, what's happening? Yeah, I decided to bring this dog, this puppy. I've just adapted it. It is lost. It got lost. It came in my door, in our estate, Great Wall. Today is day eight. So when I announced in the groups, all the groups in the estate, nobody turned out to be the owner. So I decided to bring it for, to the vet so that it be checked, just as a risk precaution. We just want to know like um, how your day is like, but, but we, we can always start from the basics. Uh, what prompted you to start this clinic and uh, when did you start? Uh, Royal Crest Vet Clinic was initially started as Royal Court. We basically served the area around because there was need to serve the locals, especially the, the Maasai community. They needed to find a place where they can do their lab work. Uh, so in order to up their diagnostic and uh, as a treatment plan, we needed to put up a center. So we came up with a vet clinic in 2014. And from there, we have continued to upgrade and, and, uh, and serve them. So currently we serve both uh, large and small animals of mixed practice. At this clinic basically we serve mostly small animals, that is cats and dogs. We also have other doctors who go uh, for ambulatories around the area. That is the, the pastoralists. We also have zero grazing communities. And those who are also in detached and semi-detached houses. Just like humans, uh, grooming entails uh, uh, several factors. And for dogs, basically most of them have uh, long fur that can mat, or they can also have other factors, like in humans they have dandruff, in dogs they have mange or flake-like white mites. So when a dog comes in for grooming, what we do is we comb through to remove the dead uh, growths. And then we also, from there we can clip, we shampoo with a medicated shampoo, and then we blow dry 
and then we wash, um, we do teeth brushing, and then we do pedicure and manicure, and then the dog is happily. Uh, how often should that happen, and uh, how much on average would it cost uh, a pet owner? For a pet owner, uh, basically for a full grooming, at least once a month or twice a month is okay. So it depends on uh, client and the environment they live in. And for charges, it may range in between, between 1500 to 2000 yes. I also see you have uh, different uh, coras and uh, riches. Uh, also, I can see some, uh, something on the shelves. Probably you can uh, tell us what's that and how is it important. So, uh, basically, we also, as a holistic, we do a holistic approach to animal care and healthcare. So we also provide uh, supportive accessories for dogs and cats. That is ranging from different type of dog food, leashes, collar, diapers, toothbrush and toothpastes. Hey, can you give us some, uh, like, like for the diapers, uh, the toothbrushes and the toothpaste, G give us some more info into that. That really sounds interesting. For example, like diapers, mostly they are used in dogs. You're going somewhere in a supermarket, you're going out, you're hanging out, you're taking your dog for a walk, and you don't want your dogs to litter around or have issues. Or you have a dog that has an issue with uh, holding in, uh, probably urine or, or feces, it has a medical condition. Then at that point, we, we uh, suggest diapers. And toothbrush and toothpaste are just for dental health care. So sometimes you have uh, pets that have issues with their dental, and even after uh, scaling or uh, dental care, they follow up with toothbrushing. These are specifically made for the dogs and cats. Which are those cases that you usually handle um, as far as uh, the, the pests are concerned, both internal and external parasites? Generally, as a normal uh, routine management of dogs and cats, it is recommended that whenever you plan to have a dog or keep a dog, it's good to take it as a family member because it, it comes also as being part of you. So uh, as part of the care, you have to uh, take care of the both internal and external parasites. And beside that, you have to go, uh, some people go a higher level and keep it groomed because you don't have to have a half family member in and there's also dirt and you guys are clean. So most of the issues we have, uh, the fleas and ticks generally can affect the animal health. Uh, for instance, the fleas cause a major issue like flea allergic dermatitis, where you find from the tail region coming up uh, a place we call a lumbar, re lumbar region, we have far falling out, alopecia, and it's really just basics, uh, factors of controlling fleas. Other things like they'll get some dandruff, uh, dandruff-like, which we call mench or mites, and these routinely are maintained by keeping it well combed and clean. This swarm presents also as a burden. They pre, pre, preempt uh, diseases before the attack. So they create stress to the animal, leading to opportunist bacteria and viral infection that attack them. Especially when the puppies are young, they are attacked by worms before other viral infection goes in. So it becomes part of uh, uh, concern. When it comes to prevention, that is the part of the pet owner. What, uh, what measures can they take? So generally, it's whenever you're acquiring or having a pet, you need a good plan. A good plan entails where does the pet live and stay? What will it eat? What do you anticipate in terms of disease so that you can put a preventive measure like vaccination? And the routine management like pest control and deworming. So we have those four. Mostly you make sure your pet is eating well, it's sleeping in a nice place and clean. Uh, you're doing the routine management of deworming and vaccination. Basically, all vaccines are meant to prevent diseases that are hard to treat when they get the disease. So they're mostly viruses and few bacteria that are a danger to the animals. So basically, you want to prevent the diseases before they get them.
pets require specialized care from veterinarians and as a as the owner it is your responsibility to make sure that your pet is well vaccinated dewormed and treated whenever they are they come they become sick that is all we had for you in today's episode of the resident vet reporting for ktn news i'm dr paul kangede